All right, we're gonna talk about the top three lenses that you need for nighttime travel photography. Let's go. So nighttime photography to me is not whipping out a flash or whipping out a light and filming and photographing and being really intrusive. My whole goal with photographing and filming at night is that I don't exist. That I just kind of blend into the background and I'm just documenting as things happen. So I like to use lenses that I can open way up and just shoot into the darkness. So I typically choose primes, foreshadowing. And the runner up is, this is always tough because it changes. I feel like it changes regularly. But the runner up in this situation is the Canon 24 to 70 2.8. It's a beautiful piece of glass, and it's an all-round workhorse. A lot of people use it during the day, I don't. The lens itself is great. It's a big, expensive piece of kit, and everybody loves it. I don't. It's just that when I'm shooting at night, it's a 2.8. It, it's kind of like, it, it, it covers a lot of ground. I can use it with a flash, and it still looks pretty good. But yeah, I don't really like it. But I use it, because it does its job. I think that's controversial. You don't like the 24 to 70, that's a big deal. All right, let's go to the bronze medal, and the bronze medal goes to... Once again, that's, just, that's a tough one. But in this case, because I need a little bit of extra distance, if I'm trying to like fade off into the background, I'll go with something like an 85. An 85 1.2. I know there are other apertures, but I just got this guy because it's image stabilized, which is really handy at nighttime when you're taking photographs and it's it's fairly weighty and if it goes on my 1dx mark ii it's even weightier it's a beautiful piece of glass great great for portraits but it works really well at nighttime too and it's got a nice fall off Ooh, crispy bokeh delish all right and then we've got number two number two is gonna have to be the Could 50. You Could you try again oh, well okay i'll be tidier all right, well then my number two is the 50 mil 1.2. This is the pricier one. There's a couple other options out there, the 1.4 and the 1.8, if they still make the 1.8, I'm not sure. It's great. It looks good. It's sharp. And I mean, if you've ever shot with one, you get it. If you haven't, get one, shoot with one. I can give you some tech specs on it, but the truth is it doesn't matter. Just get one. Number one, drum roll please. It is the 24. 1.4. This thing is awesome. It, it, uh, my brother-in-law started using this and I quickly converted. It's kind of like my 16 to 35 for nighttime. It allows me to get close to the action, be involved, be in those moments. It's great. If you haven't tried one, try one. It was a game changer for me. And you'll notice that my selects are primes for the simple fact I want to open up, but also it forces me to move around and I like being involved and engaged in a situation just as much as I like slipping into the background with say something like an 85. The other lens that I have not mentioned is a 100 mil macro 2.8. And it is really handy at night times, but I tend not to pack it, except for in certain situations. So you say, Justin, what about lights? Do you not bring lights? Why don't you use lights? I'm like, mm. I don't like bringing lights. But if I have to bring lights, um, on the photography side, I will use something like this. It's a Profoto A1, but I won't stick it on my camera. What I'll do is I'll use a trigger, so then I'll be able to hold this thing off to the side, and I can take photos so I can get some side light. But I rarely ever use it. But it is pretty awesome for selfies. Note. And then for video. <laughs> All right, and for video, it's this guy. It's an aperture. I don't even know what it is. I'll put it down in the description, but it works great. Um, it's a little bit sharp, meaning like physically sharp on edges. They're not rounded. Um, so it scares me when it's in my camera bag. So I kind of have to like protect it or put it in a separate pocket. But it does really well if you want to bring light to a situation, but I often don't like to bring light to a situation. I like to keep it al natural. Okay, my nighttime secret weapon. And if you don't have one of these, get one of these because at nighttime this thing's a game changer it is one of these they're like a hundred bucks lcd dvf 3c so basically there's a magnetic bit here and there's a magnet on here 
clip it in. I then can put my strap on my arm. Doot, doot, doot. And then I put my eye up to it. And now I have multiple points of contact. So I'm gonna be able to take steady photography and video with this eyepiece on. It's awesome. So you're getting crispy images and video and steadier video because remember, none of these prime lenses have image stabilization. So it gets a little bit tricky towards the end of a long day trying to keep that steady. So these things are really handy and they're only hundred bucks. What are the best settings for nighttime photography? I hate this. I feel like this is always the answer when it comes to photography and or filmmaking. It totally depends. Um, the way that I work is that I don't set anything up. I go with the flow of what a day is like for my clients. So I don't get to choose what the lights are like. I don't get to choose if they use red up lights or blue up lights or whatever it is to light a scene. I just gotta roll with the punches. So what are the best camera settings? Who knows? Whatever works for that given situation. I think with nighttime photography, we see it all over the place on Instagram or on Facebook or whatever the heck you're looking at. Um, you see somebody with a tripod, these beautiful imagery with streaking light and the scenes are epic. The truth is, I don't get to, I don't get that. That's not, that doesn't happen in my normal day. Um, tripods are a luxury and they, I bring them just in case if they potentially will work for the situation, but I don't often have them. It's usually me, a bag, a bunch of glass and some bodies, and I've gotta be able to do things in the dark. So it comes with practice. And I think as you work on your photography at night, it's getting comfortable with all this stuff. Um, which is why I have my set lenses that I take, so I'm comfortable with those. I have the bodies that I usually take, which are these two right here, 1DX and the 5D Mark IV, so I know the buttons, I know what they do, I know where the settings are, I know all of that stuff, and I'm used to doing it in the dark. Because when the show's on, and it's dark, and you still have to capture those images, you know, you can't be whipping out torches and turning on big lights and stuff to try and find things because it looks unprofessional. You practice doing that and then you get used to doing this stuff in the dark. All right guys, if you like this video, learning about my nighttime lenses, um, you might like my daytime lenses. So click on one of these videos and it'll take you right there. If this added any value to your life, hit that little like button. And if you don't like my setup, let me know. Put it down below, tell me why, what, how, what you do differently, I'd love to hear. But until then, pick up that phone, call your friends, call your family. I'm out of here. Taco Burrito.